Ladies and gentlemen, from the Universal Church of Freedom, Peace and Justice, Deacon Gerald Salenti. Hello, this is Deacon Salenti of the Universal Church of Freedom, Peace and Justice. In America, the land of no opportunity anymore, with a big zone everything, that used to be mom and pop stores like drug stores or drug chains, stationary stores are now stationary chains, hardware stores are hardware chains, one after another, grocery stores, hardware stores, stationary stores, drug stores, all chains. It's not the land of opportunity anymore. And America attacks all these countries around the world in the name of bringing freedom and democracy, while the people of the United States have lost it right here. They call this a democratic country or republic. They just had midterm elections. If you're not a member of the club, you don't run any elections and win. It's a one party system broken into two divisions, the Republicans and the Democrats. Only the rich people could run or the ones that get the money from the rich. They had a governor's race in Georgia. The woman who lost, Stacey Abrams, raised nearly a hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars to run for governor of Georgia. In the Trends Journal, we noted the Big's own two-party system. Billionaires spend record amount in the 2022 midterm elections. The fellow over there in Illinois, Pritzker, one of the richest families in America, they own the Hyatt Hotel chain and others. It's one after another. Outside parties don't have a chance. And then the elections are a joke. They're still counting ballots. And over 600,000 in Arizona, it was a mix up, a mess up. And then they put the headlines election officials say to be patient. Officials? They're bureaucrats. Officials, this is very simple. You should have paper ballots. That's all. You have, count the ballots. Have everybody watching the counting. Machines are rigged. It's a rigged game. I was at an event last night honoring someone. And they had Boy Scouts there. And they did a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I said, the whole end of that is a total farce. One nation under God? It's not a nation under God. What nation under God kills people all over the world in the name of bringing freedom and democracy? Liberty and justice for all? No, not all. Not all. You had J.P. Morgan Chase convicted of five felonies. It wasn't liberty and justice for all. They get a slap on the wrist while the little people go to jail, pay the fines to the fullest. You just saw what happened with CVS and Walgreens. Again, the chains. Fined $10 billion for opiates that destroyed the lives of probably killed probably a million people, if not more.
They say about 600 something thousand. Did any of the freedom, liberty, and justice for all? There was no justice. They get fined. That's fine. We'll pay the fine. Elections. This other guy down there in Texas is Beto O'Rourke, $77 million to lose running for governor. Could you imagine if this money was put into a freedom, peace, and justice movement? Could you imagine if the billionaires and all the people that give the money to politicians donated to freedom, peace, and justice? If we had a hundred million dollars, we would change the course of life on earth. No, no. One nation under God, this has become a nation under Satan with the murderous wars that America has launched and keeps launching, as with the Ukraine war. It's not America's business. It's a border dispute that's been going on for over 300 years. But they make it sound like the Vietnam War. If we don't stop those commies in Vietnam, those dominoes will keep falling. And before you know it, they'll be falling on the shores of California. That's what they said. And they're saying the same thing. If we don't stop Russia, it's going to be Finland, Lithuania, Latvia, Norway, Sweden, NATO. If we don't stop those Chinese... John Pilger, who wrote Silencing of the Lambs, notes that since he was born, America, in the name of freedom and democracy, invaded over 50 countries. You have now the Washington Post reported Regardless of who gets elected, it's the military-industrial complex is in charge. Reporting on Republican Party divisions over funding the Ukraine proxy war, the Washington Post notes that despite scattered internal opposition, the GOP remains, quote, home to a large number of old-school hawks who promise to continue providing support for Ukraine. And of course, in the Democratic Party, those so-called progressives, they withdrew their letter to President Biden a few weeks ago asking for peace talks. We need a trillion dollar defense budget, said the editor of National Review earlier this year. We need more and better weapons for a newly threatening security environment Russia's aggression underlines the potential of the United States having to fight simultaneous wars in Europe. It's not an issue of the United States. These wars in Europe have been going on forever. A president of the United States, the first one, George Washington, in his farewell address, warns the American people not to get involved in wars in Europe because they've been going on forever. And now we have these people telling us that we have to get involved? Russia's aggression underlines the potential of the U.S. having to fight simultaneous wars in Europe and Asia to defend NATO and to stave off China's attack on Taiwan or elsewhere when our forces currently may not be adequate to winning one fight. Well, I would say this to you, Mr. Lowry. American forces haven't won one fight since World War II. But they've killed millions of people across the globe. This is the propaganda that is sold to the people and the people swallow. No peace movements, none of the religions, none of them are coming out forcefully for peace other than the universal church of freedom 
peace, and justice. Where are the Mormons? Where are the Seventh-day Adventists? Where are the Catholics? Where are the Episcopalians? Where are the Jews? Where are the Baptists? Where are they? And then the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Miley, said on Wednesday that he sees an opportunity for negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. When there is an opportunity to negotiate, when peace can be achieved, seize it, he said to the Economic Club of New York. The Economic Club. The Economic Club. The Economic Club. The Club. As George Collins said, one big club and you ain't in it. Miley thinks Russia is digging in for the winter and that the battle lines won't change much over the next few months. He said lessons should be learned from World War I when European powers refused to negotiate, led to millions more casualties in trench warfare. Not only millions of tragedies in trench warfare, destroying century-old buildings, and millions and millions of lives. And how about World War II? And did you forget the Vietnam War? Oh, and talking about failing to negotiate, how about the Iraq War? Wars. How about the Afghan Wars, Mr. Miley? The New York Times reported the next day that Miley is at odds with a high-level U.S. officials over his stance of peace. High level. We must look up to them? What high level? How about low lifes? Times reported that President Biden's advisors have concluded that the moment is not ripe for peace talks and that the U.S. shouldn't be pressuring Ukraine to negotiate and... Up to this point, the Biden administration has discouraged diplomacy even when a deal was within reach after Ukraine and Russia held in-person talks in Istanbul at the end of March. This is according to antiwar.com. After the, interval, in, in, after the talks in Istanbul, former President Boris Johnson in the UK visited Kyiv and urged against negotiations with Russia. Once it was clear there would be no deal, the U.S. said it was going to, quote, weaken Russia, and that was from the words of America's defense contractor, excuse me, defense secretary, who worked for the second largest defense contractor before coming as Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, who worked for Raytheon. And they passed, Congress passed a $40 billion aid package for Ukraine that every Democrat, Every Democrat voted for. So there you have it. And what's going on? This is very serious. All they're doing is talking about more war. But in other countries, there are protests going on. Last week, protesters held banners, placards, and rainbow flags at event, it's in Italy, calling for diplomatic efforts to solve the Ukraine crisis. Quote, more arms for hugs, no more wars, read one barrier, banner. The protests have shined a new light on different a light on differences among Italian political leadership. The former Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conti, now a member of the government opposition, stating Sunday that no more arms should be sent without parliamentary approval. Quote, we need a breakthrough toward a ceasefire in peace negotiations. Yep. You don't hear any of that in the United States. Tens of thousands of Italians, this is from France 24, marched through Rome, 
calling for peace in Ukraine and urging Italy to stop sending weapons to fight the Russian invasion. No to war, no to sending weapons. Read one large banner carried by protesters. Over 30,000 people. 30,000 people. Nine months later, they're saying, look at the facts. Sending weapons does not help stop, start, stop the war. Weapons help fuel the war. Simple. And there are protests, by the way, going on all over. All over. Thousands of protests in Bulgaria, not only for the war, but for people because of the war, the energy prices are escalating throughout Europe that are unprecedented, up well over 100% from year to date because of the sanctions that the politicians put on Russia. So you have all these protests going on, not only about the war, there's strikes about lack of basic living standards. Government corruption, crime, violence, the refugee crisis getting worse and worse all throughout Europe. And remember, when all else fails, they take you to war. And that's what they're going to do. They've taken us to war, and you're going to see more and more protests. One country after another, Spain, France, Italy, Czech Republic, all people taking to the streets, Germany, protesting against the war. And again, in the United States, as the cover of the Trends Journal shows, it makes no difference who you vote for. Vote for the loser you hate the least. The war machine always wins. And the war machine, as we're showing by the data and the facts, always wins. They're now talking about a trillion dollar defense budget in the United States. One trillion dollars. And then on the COVID front, as we've said, it has destroyed the lives and livelihoods of billions of people around the planet. Socioeconomic and geopolitically. 42% of Gen Z diagnosed with a mental health condition survey reveals. 42% of Americans young Generation Z are dealing with mental health conditions. A new survey finds this, according to a study. A range of these issues were largely identified during the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. That is propaganda. Not during the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, the COVID-19 war that the politicians launched. I ask everybody, how many people do you know, do you know personally that died of COVID? Most everybody I know knows no one. And then the ones that say, well, I know somebody that died. Well, how old were they? Well, she was 88. Well, the average death age in the United States is 78. So that's, you know, I don't think COVID did it, but maybe and again, according to the CDC, 94% of all the people that died had two that pre-existing comorbidities, such as obesity, type 2 diabetics, and respiratory illness. But they're selling it as the pandemic. And by the way, the Americans voted for their governors who locked them down. They voted to bring them back. This article goes on. The analysis by Harmony Healthcare IT suggests tens of millions of Gen Z young adults started dealing with mental health problems in the months immediately following the start of the global pandemic in March 2020. No, not the start of the 
global pandemic, the start of politicians issuing politically science-based mandates, draconian mandates that lock them down. Young adults, let's go by the numbers. One to 17 year olds are about 72 million in the United States. In two years, out of that 72 million, around 700 died from COVID. According to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, 60% of those people in one to 17 year old age bracket were obese. Yet they locked them down, forced them to get vaccinated. And they're not the ones dying from it. Again, 700 out of 70 million? Nothing. And they're losing their minds. The damage that has been done by the COVID war is incalculable. Besides the businesses that have gone out of business, the lives that have been destroyed, three quarters of these Americans, all under the age of 25, say the pandemic, again, not the pandemic, the lockdowns, but this is how they use propaganda. It's not the pandemic. It's the draconian mandates. Nearly 90% of Generation Z respondents, excuse me, three quarters of these Americans, all in the age of 25, said the pandemic impacted their mental health with many citing loneliness and uncertainty about the future. Nearly 90% of Gen Z respondents believe their generation is not set up for success and 75% feel they are at a disadvantage in comparison to previous generations. Yep, like my generation, the baby boomers. Every poll that used to come out when I was a young kid and a young man, the future was always going to be better than the past. Now it's the opposite. Right in front of everybody's eyes. The opposite. Life on earth is turning into hell on earth. And if we don't do something to reverse it, it's going to get worse. The facts, the figures, I'm giving them to you. They are not mine. They are from the sources that are putting them out there. You could believe them or not believe them. Everybody must do something. If everybody just does something, the whole thing will change if they do something in a positive way. And one of the positive ways is to donate. Let's get a hundred million dollars. If you could send a hundred million dollars to a loser who runs for political office, why can't the Universal Church of Freedom, Peace, and Justice have a hundred million? We could change the world and reverse these negative trends and accentuate the positive and we eliminate the negative. Again, do everything that you can to do. Everything, anything, anywhere, any place, do it in a positive way to help others and move forward at a high level because you can see how low we're going. Thank you. And please, again, remember, if we do not reverse this, life on earth is going to be hell on earth. Amen and a women.